I've been in here in uh, UK the last five years with a family and I have my dental practice in Brighton Hove in uh, Boundary at Boundary Implant Centre as you can see here so thank you very much and thank you Karen for giving me this opportunity to have my presentation today I will go through uh, the laser in dentistry this one better. Laser and dentistry and how the laser and dentistry and the application of laser, laser application in dentistry uh, reach, reach the level of holistic approach in dentistry in general and it is a unique tool to say that it is really a holistic treatment of so many things in dental treatments and dental application, laser dental applications. So introduction here, we know all the scientist Einstein, 1917, a long time ago, more than 100 years. He was the innovator of the theory of simulated emission of laser, but the first man who amplified the laser in a tool is Mayman, 1960 with the rubber laser. This is the first laser being done 61, which is the uh, NDRG laser, which is mostly for soft tissue. And then followed with other years, the other types of laser. Most of them at the beginning was only for soft tissue and minimal use in hard tissue in the mouth. So we have two types of tissue. Soft tissue is the gum and the oral mucosa and everything, and the bone the jaw bones, which is a heart tissue, and the teeth, as well as a heart tissue. So what's laser does mean? L is light, A is amplification, by the stimulated emission of radiation. And this is, make it a unique, because of the coloration, coherency, and excellent concentration makes it a very unique radiation and straight ahead. So laser is a light nothing else more than light. But what type of light it is? It is simulated emission of radiation. It's amplified stimulation. Okay? So, science fiction, vice versa. Science fact, lasers are really a hallmark of iconic comic series of science and science fiction novels. They have so many capabilities most of cases, laser are highly accurate, straight ahead, targeting the, the, the point and targeting the, 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 the tissue and doing the job accurately like a pinpoint, okay, uh, radiation and treating and healing when they, we use them in low level uh, irradiation and uh, millijoules and everything. When we use them in high concentration and high millijoules and otherwise they will be destructive or suppressive. We'll come back to this one later on. Types of dental laser and uses. Mo there are two types, generally two types of dental lasers. There are hard tissue lasers and soft tissue lasers as I said at the beginning. So most of them are said until about 30 years, 25 years until they will discover the laser, the erbium laser, which is heart tissue laser, which we can do fillings with this one, we can do cavities, we can do uh, uh, bone operation, cutting the bone, sterilizing the bone, irradiating the bone, because the unique tool of laser is that it's the only tool could stimulate the tissue regeneration, whether they are soft tissue or heart tissue around the teeth and inside the jawbone and in our gum. So there are erbium, NDIAC, dioid. Most of, nowadays, most of the lasers you being used is uh, diode laser and erbium laser. Erbium laser is mainly for heart tissue, la uh, it's heart tissue laser for the teeth, having cavities, having uh, the desensitization, having uh, the bone operation, bone jaw operations, and everything. And sterilizing the bone after extractions with infected teeth. 
And the diode laser could be used for gum disease treatment and for gingivoplasty for so many other jobs which is uh, regarding the soft tissue, the gingiva, gum, and the uh, oral mucosa. As I said before, laser tissue interaction at low doses stimulate proliferation, stimulate regeneration of the tissue. Okay? If you don't understand anything, you can interrupt me, please. Yeah? If you, if I, my language is very scientific, so interrupt me, please. Don't hesitate to interrupt me, and I will explain in detail what, what I do mean. So at low doses, as I said, it is stimulating. This is the only tool in comparison to other tools we use in holistic dentistry, like ozone or something like other, uh, like electrotomes or something like this. But electrotomes is really destructive and suppressive. Uh, and uh, ozone is very limited uses for ozone in dentistry. It could help only in remineralization of very small cavities and it could help in gum disease, but so many literatures referring that laser application, low-level laser application and therapy is really more and more superior and effective rather than ozone treatment. I'm not disadvertising the ozones and or disadvertising dentists, my colleagues who are using ozone. It is more limited use of ozone to do with bacterial bacteriocidal function, I mean to kill the bacteria rather than doing the stimulation of the tissue regulation with, with only with, which could be done only with laser application. Laser tissue interaction is very important so we have the scattering which sometimes is beneficial, sometimes is not. We have the transmission, I will explain the scattering because sometimes we need to irradiate an area, not a pinpoint to function or to do the job. So scattering is good to transmit and to transfer the energy of the laser for an area, okay? And the transmission is good as well. It could be transmitting the skin and going to the organ or to the point we need to heal with laser. So this is transmission. It could be absorbed, self-absorption, when you put the end of the tip of the fiber tip on the tissue and it could be absorbed, pinpoint absorption as I said. And then the reflection, this is not good because if we have a reflection we don't have any action. Okay? And then the absorption again, which is like not straight ahead absorption, it's like curved absorption of the irradiation. So this is the tissue interaction with the laser. Photobiomodulation laser strategies in periodontal therapy. So what I am talking about it in periodontal therapy and other uses. But mainly, this is when we say periodontal therapy, we mean that we are dealing with the tissue around the teeth. So perio, periodontal, it's a Greek word. Perio means all around. Okay? Dental, don, periodontal means around. Odontos, it's a Greek word, doesn't mean the tooth. So it's all around the tooth, the soft tissue and the hard tissue, and the ligaments and the periodontium, which is our tooth is connected to the bone inside the socket. So the laser, low level laser application, okay, for the surrounding tissue of the, in, in, in the periodontium, surrounding tissue of the tooth, it is helping a lot based on so many literatures here, as you can see, considers basically effective for treating periodontal disease because of its excellent physical properties, namely ablation, hemostasis, bacteria killing, and cell stimulation, regeneration, or proliferation. Does that make sense for you guys? So this is the only tool could do proliferate tissue and regenerate tissue because of it is unique specification. All right? Yes. What, yeah. what exactly do you mean by perforation? You said that's the only tool for perforation. Is that when you do proliferation? Proliferation. Oh, sorry. Sorry, yeah, yeah. proliferation. Sorry for my accent. <laughs> Might be Greekish. <laughs> okay. So application of dental laser. It's not only for perio or gum disease treatment. It's so many applications. It's in the diagnosis. 
and clinical, clinical practice. It's periodontal and implant therapy. It's preventive and conservative dentistry. As I said, the heart tissue laser could, we could uh, drill, instead of drilling, sorry, we could open the cavity with laser uh, uh, only when, with, with a new uh, uh, caries area or decay in the tooth because if it is filled with amalgam, we can't remove the amalgam with the laser, unfortunately. This is one of the disadvantages, but I am now on the way to have the smart protocol in my practice within the next month for removal of amalgam with a safe way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The safe amalgam and mercury removal protocol. I will have it to be implicated in my practice soon. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fingers crossed. So, and using it in endodontic treatments does mean root canal treatments. So many holistic patients come to my practice. Please take this tooth out. It's root canal long time ago. It causing me uh, cutting my energy, cutting my energy of my stomach, cutting energy of my gut, cutting energy of my body, one of the organs of my body, many organs of my body. Please take it out. Some of the other patients, they say that they have three, four root canal treatment. Some of them are working properly, even though they are old, some of them are not. And taking the tooth out, it sterilized the area of bone after the extraction with laser, with erbium laser mainly, regenerate the tissue, will help stimulate the regeneration of the tissue, and in two to three months, the healing will be unique healing, and we will not have the loss of the bone that with simple extractions and ordinary extraction, conventional extractions, we will have. Why? Because of the ability of the laser to stimulate the tissue regeneration. This is only could be done with laser, not ozone, unfortunately. Orthodontic, it's the removal of the, some, uh, the braces and the, some, yeah, uh, with, with uh, the laser, hard tissue laser, or on a maxillofacial surgery, removing of cyst, sterilizing the cyst. I will show you some cases later on I have done many, many years ago with a high success rate, removing of a whole cyst in the mouth about size of hazelnut or like, yeah, walnut with only application of laser without doing any surgery, without doing any flaps. I will show you later on some of more cases. So this is oral and maxillofacial surgery. TMJ disorders, which will help to make the function of the TMJ muscles and joints make them much, much better and more relieved because of this radiation of laser. Now there are so many. TMJ, it stems from mandibular joints. This joint, when we're opening the mouth, this unique joint, it's sometimes becoming stiff, becoming clicking, the, uh, yeah, proxism. Yeah, how, how, how does it help? It, it helps because we do some sessions of radiation on, 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 on the TM joint. Yes, 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 with, with laser. Uh, I'm not doing this right now, unfortunately, but I am, yeah, it's coming, yeah. <laughs> but uh, this is the only one I'm not doing with the laser application, yeah, in my practice. Everything else I can do. Uh, and I will come back a little bit for the endodontic root canal treatments because we said that coming to me and asking for extraction. While if we have done the root canal treatment with laser application before, the possibility of taking this tooth out, the root canal out, will be really diminished almost because the irradiation of laser, this is the only one could be irradiated to the surrounding tissue of the root and inside the root and could sterilize the lateral canals of dentin. So the tooth root has very, very microscopic canals that with your irrigation, when you do root canal, if somebody of you have done root canal treatment in his dentist, or oh, her dentist, so this is the way we do the sterilization of the canal before we obturate the canal and close it with some special materials. We, we call it root canal treatment. If we do this sterilization with a laser, the possibility of losing this tooth will be really almost diminished and be treated properly. That's why the endodontic treatment is really important to be done with uh, ejective laser treatment, okay? Bacteria. Yes, yes, yes. It's called the bacteria. Irradiating 
all around the tooth, apical part of the tooth, lateral parts of the roots, all around, okay, periodontal part, as we said, and this will sterilize the bone, will stimulate the stem cells to proliferate, not perforate, <laughs> proliferate to a new healthy tissue around the tooth. So treatment with laser of gum disease will regenerate the periodontal ligament, the whole tissue, the healthy tissue around the tooth. Okay? And research tools and dental laboratory tools as well. We could use the laser. So we will talk about now the bony defects, and I will show you so many cases how we managed to recreate, regenerate bone without using any bone grafts. So management of bony defects is an invasive procedure frequently requiring the use of adjunctive materials such as bone grafts or biologics, which is time consuming associated with expense, morbidity, because we need to open the flap, clear off the cyst, clear off the infection all around the tooth or the apical part of the tooth, and, now, and then uh, put one graft to compensate the bone loss, suture again, and so many times uh, the bone graft, many of my colleagues using are uh, from cadavers, from uh, uh, human origin, from animal origin, from plant origin. I'm not using any one of those. Uh, the only bone grafts I use is from the lab, it's calcium phosphate when I have very, very big, big defects. I'm not going to use it in small defects. I'm using the laser only in small defects and there's no need for any bone graft to use later on, having an implant or something like this, yeah. This is my approach, this is a new approach, being established in one of the conferences of laser conferences all around. It's basic osteogenesis. Osteogenesis means the regeneration of the bone after jaw bone defect irradiation. That's what I talked a little bit before. So when we do the extraction or when we do irradiate the jaw bone with the laser ray, okay, this will stimulate the tissue regeneration. A Boja approach? Hopefully it is. <laughs> okay, so my approach. Bone regeneration after radiation with laser alone, erbium laser, uh, and ERG laser, diode laser, the most common is diode laser and erbium laser, and mainly for bone regeneration I'm using my heart tissue laser, which is the erbium laser. No bone graft needed, and no flap retraction. Flap is the when we reflect the gum away from the jaw bone. I'm sorry, <laughs> it's a little bit looks <laughs> very butchery, <laughs> but okay, I'm oh, sorry. So, if is it clear for you guys, there's here a radiolucency, a dark area. Can you see this dark area? Yeah. 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 So I'm starting doing the, I started doing this job with a really, it's not exactly a coincidence. For, according to the literature, I had when I, I, had, I have had my lasers 2008. And that's the one I'm using still in the practice because I did renovate it so many times. So I had both combination of diode laser, which is soft tissue laser, and hard tissue laser, erbium laser. So I did extract, the, I cut the bridge here for this lady. She came to my practice, please, could you re-cement my bridge bag, please? She came with a bridge into her hands. And uh, could you re-cement my, it was very wobbly, sorry. So she said, could you re-cement it back for me, please? And I told her, uh, we have, according to the x-ray, March 2013, I told her that this is quite impossible because you have a fractured tooth here, if you can see. Here, guys, yeah, this one, the one here. And we have another tooth, which was very, very wobbly. And we have de-cemented post inside the root here. So I told her, look, the best... <laughs> Case scenario, we can cut the bridge as I cut it here in the middle. Okay? Take the bridge out. I took the bridge out. Take the teeth out. 
I radiate them with Airbnb laser and cut the bridge and re it like this way. And she came back. I lost her. I told her, look, in two months, three months, you should come back to take another x-ray to see your bone, how it is healing. Because we have really a big, a big, a big amount of bone being dissolved due to the infection of the teeth and due to the crack of the roots. Does that make sense for you all, guys? Yeah? Okay. So, I cut the bridge, re-cemented like this way, re the old post, and I told her, come after two or three months. And she came after 21 months, and she said, please, could you re it again back to me? I told her, how many months do you want me to re it again back to you? You need to have two implants there, taking x-rays, and see the bone, how it heals, without using one crystal of any synthetic bone, or, yes, nothing. Nothing, just with the radiation of laser. And that's really a clear evidence, scientific evidence, that the laser could regenerate tissue, could regenerate bone, could regenerate gum. And she was ready for two implants, but she couldn't have the money to pay for the implants. That's fine. And four and a half years she came back, and the whole bone was full there. Dense bone. We didn't need four and a half months, a year to wait for her. It was three months afterwards, it was the bone back. Another case, a young boy, 15 years old, 2014, he came to my practice and he has all this infection there around his tooth. Can you see the blue line a little bit? It's not very clear, but it, it is a big, a big lesion there. A big radiolucency, a big loss of bone. This is three-dimensional x-ray. Okay, three-dimensional x-ray. We call it CBCT scan, computerized tomography, cone beam computerized tomography. And this is here, the lesion, as you can see. It's quite clear here. So it's only the gum over this lesion. And I did not do anything rather than perforating with my laser tip the soft tissue going immediately to the cyst here you know what means cyst the lesion, yeah, the infection bombarded with laser and 12 months later he came back again I lost him where have you been? <laughs> why you are not coming to follow the case? I'm fine, I'm fine nothing wrong here I'm very well. Let me have an x-ray. Send him back to the CBCT scan. And that was the case. Healed completely with the anatomical sagittal fissure. I don't know if you understand those words. Yeah, it's the fissure, the fissure, the line here. It's anatomical anatom anatomy of the body. Natural. Yeah, natural anatomy. Came back with no opening, with no surgery, with no... Even sometimes I don't use anesthetic because the laser is not painful at all. Even though, with two applications of laser, one week in between them, that's it, apart. <coughs> Another case. Root canal treatment with laser. Big lesion there. Okay? And three and a half months later, the size of the lesion it's now almost half. Can you see three-dimensional x-ray? It's bilateral lesion. What that does mean? It's open from inside and outside. It's open. There's nothing. You can pass your finger through there. I'm sorry. <laughs> Again, the same application. And 14 months later, it's about 10% the size of the cyst of the lesion with laser application only. From inside, the picture here, down, and inside again, the size of it is much, much smaller. Another lady, 57 years old, she was very stubborn. <laughs> <laughs> she came once, she'd been referred from another colleague. I have the lesion here. Can you see the circle, this dark circle there? Yes, yeah, this one. 
and here another dark circle. This is like um, a section of 3D image. So this is a horizontal section, this is sagittal section, vertical section, let's say. All right, so, and I have the lesion here as well. Here, all around the tooth. And this is February 2018. Okay? I, I was there in Greece, yeah. Still, not here in England, yeah. So, eight months later, or in April, sorry, this is April, and two months later, the size of the lesion is about one-third from what it is started with. My colleague referred her to me, please do a bisectomy. What means a bisectomy? We open the flap, cut the root, the apex of the root, and something like this, which is really very, very invasive procedures. And I told her, okay, let's try to bombard it with laser, bombard with laser without any flap, just with the tip of the laser. Okay, and then eight months later, the lesion has disappeared. Then disappeared completely. And this is only with laser application. Another case, it's a little bit foggy here and not clear. So this is an infection of the tooth. I will show you the x-ray afterwards. And uh, it was really very severe infection. The patient came very swollen. Okay, injection, bombarding with laser. It's a little bit hesitant here, it's not clear. 25 days later, the gum around the infection and the infection area, it's more healthy than the other gum. <laughs> and this is because of the laser. Simple, quick, easy, and healthy, and natural. Simulating the natural, healthy heal wound healing. This is the case, January 2019. This is 25 days, so this is foggy here. The lesion is foggy because it was severely infected and filled with bacteria and filled with pus and infection. And then afterwards, 25 days, it was more clear. There's no bone for formation yet, but after one and a half years, again, lost him. <laughs> they are fine. They are not coming back when they are fine. <laughs> That's everywhere, not only in Greece. More in Greece, maybe. <laughs> So he came back, and one and a half years, the whole bone has been formed around the root, very, very small part, which needs a little bit more time to be calcified and being whitish in color in the x-ray. Uses of laser application in implants, and implant surgery and implants. So many uses that we can do here, and we can save time, money, hustle for the patient, and so many things. This implant there, I have lost it three months after the insertion. It was loose inside the mouth of the patient. Okay? Took it out and screw it. Bombarded it with laser, as you can see the tip fiber of the laser. Okay? And insert it again, screw it again to the socket. And wait for another three months. <laughs> That was the case I started with. This big lesion here, she's a young lady, 38 years old. This lesion here, it's a very, very big lesion. And those three teeth, unfortunately, being extracted. Four teeth, four teeth being extracted, yeah? Yes, upper left five, six, seven, and eight. Because of the big lesion, a big infection. And then I inserted two implants, one in number five, one in number six, after, of course, after treating this cyst with laser and wait about three months, three, three and a half months, then inserted the two implants, which I lost one of them, as I showed you, and reinserted again, take it out, sterilize it with laser. I'm saying sterilization. Sterilization doesn't mean put it on the autoclave and sterilizing it. But I mean the word sterilization because this is the only way with laser you can sterilize, not only disinfect. Does that make sense for you? Okay, please interrupt me again, yeah? Sorry for my scientific language, but yeah. It's so this is one year later and the whole CVC scans, I mean the three-dimensional image, 
showing me a nice healthy bone around the implant that I reinserted and the other implant. And that's pleasure to the laser application. This is another guy, young guy, 17 years old, with unfortunate internal tooth resorption. That doesn't mean the nature didn't help him. He had an accident, I think so, when he was a child, and this tooth internally being dissolved. So it's not complete. If you can see the section here, this root is not complete. It's not round like this one. Can you see? Yeah. And there's an infection here. So this tooth is non-restorable. We took it out, and you can see there's no bone here, no bone here. This is sagittal section, okay? And no bone on the outside surface of the tooth, no bone on the inside surface of the tooth. But I did my implant and left about three to five millimeter. This is three months later. This is a picture how the gum healed properly because I bought the area after the extraction and after the implant insertion all around. No bone grafts used. I left it to heal naturally with a temporary crown on it because it's front tooth, front central. So the bone here, three months later, if you can see this one, sorry for the picture. Can you see me all? Yeah, this is, the bone was lost. So the bone healed and covered this area three months later immediately and almost going to cover the rest of the implant. This is the implant here till up and this is the temporary crown here inside. And this is nine months later, which the bone is covering all around the implant with no any bone grafts. And this is pleasure to the laser application. Another one. This is another x-ray two years later again. He went out and I couldn't see him. And I called and called and called again and again. Come please to have an x-ray to see what's going on. I'm fine, doctor. I'm fine. Okay. Lovely. So oh, this is really a big proof, yeah. Conclusion. Bone regeneration could be achieved by irradiation with erbium, yard laser only, even in large osseous lesions in the upper and lower jaw. Biostimulation or photobiomodulation of bone regeneration, very difficult words. It's a regeneration, okay? No way. <laughs> it could be really regenerated and achieved with the laser use only. Fewer complication and postoperative surgical infections using this simple approach technique. Very, very fewer complication. No gum opening, no gum closure, no stitches, no sutures, nothing. And natural healing of bone without the use of any bone graft substance. <coughs> Discussion. Could this pioneering approach be the new trend in bone generation? Could this method be applied to the majority of bone defects? Should we retract flab, I mean opening the gum, every time we need to sterilize the bone? Or take the cyst out in all cases? Should you use bone grafts in all cases? I don't think so. I have saw hundreds and hundreds of cases. I didn't want you to get bored with uh, my research, the whole research, so I didn't, I'm not showing you the results or the methods or the materials. It doesn't make any sense for you because it's not uh, like uh, most of you are not dentists. We have only one dental nurse here. <laughs> and my wife as well. She's a dental nurse with me, working with me. So take home message, Erbium, laser or erbium and diode lasers, lasers in general, could enhance the bone tissue regeneration in large lesions and prior to implant and after implant insertion. This new treatment approach does not require necessarily a graft placement and this is the first large series of patients really uh, preliminary data show response in most of the patients, 95%. Bibliography here, so many, and uh, 
so many of them talking about how the laser approach and laser application industry are really holistic way. There is no other explanation of it. And thank you very much for your attention. Yeah. You mentioned you had hundreds of successful patients. Yes. Is there any unsuccessful patients? <laughs> yes, we have unsuccessful patients. Of course, we have successful patients. One of the cases. The ah, the reason. So, what was the question, please? So, let me so the, the question here is you have hundreds of successful cases, but we have some, yeah, like I did say, about almost 94%. So, what about the 6% and why it's happening? So, so many things will play a big role in the healing into inside our body. Yeah. I, I think so, some patients have so many systematic disease. So, uh, one of the patients I show you there, uh, she has a systematic disease, she has a thyroid. She, as she said, the pulse of thyroxine. And this is, uh, our, our, our thyroid hormone, uh, our thyroid gland, is really, it's our biological clock. It's really arranging for so many hormone secretions, which is interacted and acting with our development, with our healing, with, 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 with so many things. Some patients are taking statins. Very easy. It would, could, could, could cause, yeah. Yeah, it could cause like uh, implant failure. Very easy because the bone cannot heal properly with the presence of statins inside our bodies, okay? It's a big myth, the statins that will depress the cholesterol, but it's not real, yeah? It's a big myth, it's a big myth, yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's it. So, there are some systematic diseases, we can't tell them all to follow the holistic way of their life. It's impossible. We can't, yeah, not at all. Yes, yes please. Can you get it on the NHS? Like laser treatment and stuff. No way. No way. <laughs> that would be a dream. <laughs> it is, it, to be honest, uh, mo mo most of my holistic patients coming from so many far distances uh, because they know that the application of this is expensive. Uh, it could be, yeah, somehow, like treatment of gum disease, it is expensive. But if you will go to a periodontologist who treats with a conventional treatment, just scrapping the tooth and grinding it down and uh, having like a uh, brush, please, have the interdental brushes, which I forbid, um, forbid my all patients to do use them. I, they, yes, they, you need to use the interdental rubber sticks in between sticks rather than the brushes, the mini brushes, which could grind your tooth and wear your tooth in such a, a bad way. If you use them for 10 years, you will see a tunnels around your teeth, wow. like a curves around you. And that's, you done it, you've done it by yourself <laughs> if you continue to use them. Sorry about this. So the advantage, the whole mean advantage of using the laser, of treating gum disease, of treating something else, of doing the bone cyst healing, of doing the in, uh, uh, disinfection inside and uh, the root canal treatment and, and, and so many applications we use it. It's really, at the end of the day, it's much cheaper than going to more invasive treatments like having an implant afterwards, like having something else rather than keeping the tooth inside your mouth. So if you balance it, it will be much cheaper because for, for, for disinfection of socket after the extraction, extraction, I'm not going to say about how much we charge for the instruction, extractions, but the laser use, it's about between 200 and 300 after the extraction. Really? Yes, it's not bad. It's not bad in consideration if you use the blood clot treatment, so you take blood from you and centrifuge it, they charge 250 to 300 at least. I have this uh, application in my practice, but I use it once, twice, because I have the laser, yeah. which is really controlling the things much better. Okay. The healing with the laser is giving me natural healing. And that will last for the rest of your life? For the rest of your life? Carry you on Did your car last for the rest of your life? <laughs> I don't think so. 
So yes, it could last, but if you follow my instructions, if you come every six months to one year at least, at least every six months, to do cleaning, proper cleaning, to be checked by me or by another your dentist. I have diminished the pockets in hundreds and hundreds of patients after gum disease treatments. We have here nice patients, my lovely patients. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we, we the, the pockets from very deep pockets they become very shallow and natural pockets and natural sulcuses. So it's really worthy. So you go you go to periodontal disease treatment doctor and specialist or special centerist whatever and then you will see that he will charge you about two and a half thousand for the four quadrants I might charge you two and a half to three thousand for the whole quadrants where with you, laser where are you based? <laughs> Brighton Hove oh I could go there okay <laughs> <laughs> okay lovely yes yes Yes, rubber sticks, interdental rubber sticks, much better than, yeah, flossing, water floss devices. There are so many in the uh, online. You can invest in a good one, yeah. yeah, because they might range from 30 pounds to 120 pounds. So you will invest with, you will check the reviews. I'm not gonna say any company because I will be exposed too much. <laughs> but uh, water floss, interdental rubber sticks. Uh, 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 flossing much better than the interdental brushes. So with yeah, with tape, yes, better, much better with tape. There are some tapes which are expandable, so you put them inside the mouth and then with the water they expand it and become a, like a fluffy super floss. We, yeah. very, very okay. They are okay if you can use them properly. Okay, there are some other types which are like this way. Yeah, a Y-shaped one, yeah. They may, might be much better in application on the back teeth, yeah. Because this is a little bit like, dealing like this way. <laughs> you should open your mouth very bad. <laughs> is, is, I, I've recently been to the dentist. He says I've got deep pockets and my bones are bruised. He's saying to me it's, it's part of redemption now, basically. Is there ever a point where the bone regeneration is too late? If you're using laser? No. No, it's not, not too late. It depends about the extent of it. If it is really deep and you have lost a lot of bone, we can gain some bone, but not, it's better to discover it early. But uh, have you done the conventional treatment of gum disease? You, did, did you have, you, you, he said, in, in some of your teeth or in, in general you have? Top right, he was just sighing a lot. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> So yeah, it's 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 not late. Never it's 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 it's, it's rather late, rather ne rather never. Yeah, it's never late. Yeah, no, we we can see yeah, if, if you are uh, approachable to my practice, I'm more than happy to do. Yeah. And by the way, now any consultation I I, ha I have will have on my website. I have advertisement. Any consultation for gum disease and consultation for implants because I didn't speak about the implants. I am doing holistic implants. Ceramic coated implants or ceramic implants I'm doing in addition to the titanium implants. So anybody interested with this, I am more than happy to help as well. Yes. Uh, so yeah, I'm hanging on to I'm hanging on to a, a back tooth here that's got uh, one root that's dead. Yes. And so I know there's infection and stuff. So when can I come and see you? <laughs> <laughs> with pleasure. I will. Leave a card, yeah, it's a see. bunch of cards, <laughs> and uh, you can call me when I call the practice, arrange for an appointment, I'm more than happy to do consultation. Whatever, whatever today, in front of the whole people here, audience, and any type of consultation, regardless if it's for implants, which is for free, and for gum disease treatment, which is for free as well, on my website, any type from the people here, and your relatives, and your friends, any type of consultation regarding root canal treatments either or fillings or whatever you like, it will be for the next month or two months, let's say, totally for free consultation. Thank you. Yeah. Free jobs. <laughs> <laughs> Wish support, Karen. <laughs> of course, of course, lovely, of course. <laughs>
question. Yes. Um, so this is all about uh, regeneration of the bone. Yes. I wondered whether, like say with a, a young person who's maybe had the first cavity and they get filled, have you ever had any rejuvenation of the actual tooth or the enamel? The heart tissue rejuvenation, it's really being uh, something being studied by the whole scientific mm. committee of dentistry the last two centuries at least and maybe more in ancient civilizations and something like this. It is hard to say that they have reached. They have reached like if it is very, very initial cavity, just initial cavity. I was thinking cavity, for a young person, you know, when they have their first little... Yes, one, they have... Do they have to put the filling on or... The fish of sealant. On? The fish of sealant, you mean, yeah. We call it fish of sealant, yeah. Person, I wondered whether they could actually remineralize. There is some research about the ozone used to remineralize the very, very small cavities, mm -hmm. but I haven't seen it's, okay. it does work properly, unfortunately. Okay. So you'll need us, guys, <laughs> even though young or old, when there's a cavity, unfortunately. Yeah. Yes. Um, thank you. Um, because obviously you're going to go into the bone. Yes. Is that going to cause, what kind of trauma is that going to cause to the body? Oh, yeah. That's really a very nice question and very important question. Uh, I would like to clarify that I am not a holistic dentist completely, but I have the holistic approach uh, and could collaborate with so many holistic dentists. And uh, I have so many referrals from holistic dentists as well. The whole issue that th this trauma of having an implant inside your jaw bone, believe me, believe it or not, it's much less than extracting the tooth out. It could be 10% to 20% trauma in comparison to the trauma you receive when you take the tooth out. Taking the tooth out is a severe trauma, but sometimes we need to do it. There is no other solution. That's the trauma happening when we take the tooth out, when we insert the implant, and especially if the ceramic coated or ceramic implant, it might take about double time of the titanium implant, the pure titanium implants, to heal but it doesn't matter. It will heal around a ceramic layer. It will heal around, around a ceramic uh, uh, material. It's not titanium. I know, I have inserted thousands of implants of titanium, but I have inserted 50, 60 of ceramic implants or ceramic coated. It's a big difference. So we don't have a huge literature about ceramic implants as we have for titanium implants. But that doesn't matter. It does work. Even though this, those 50, they did work. There will be a failure in those 50, one or two. As the implant, titanium implants, there are a failure of three to 10% worldwide. Nothing 100% sure as, your name please? Tara. Tara, as Tara asked me, what well, would it last for the whole rest of your life? We don't know. We don't know. Touch wood tomorrow, maybe you will have a systematic disease. You need to struggle with it. But if you can take care of it, as your car, as anything else in your life, as your health, you will have it forever. Why not? Could, could I just ask you to mention briefly, because I know we're coming up for the end of you know, time, yeah. the importance that teeth have to the rest of our body, because I think some of us don't realise yes, yes, that every yes, tooth represents... Yes, 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 yes. Although, again, I'm not the holistic one. I can answer this question a, 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 a little bit roughly quite good. So, as I hear from my patients, I learn from them, because most of them come ask, seeking a holistic way, to treat their mouth and to extract their teeth and to insert implants. I think, I'm not, not thinking, I'm sure that our mouth and our teeth are the gate of our body health as well. So this is the beginning of the digestive system. If we don't have our healthy teeth, especially the gum disease, based on literatures, 30 years ago, three zero years ago, it could cause stroke, it could cause COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease disorders, it could cause joint problems, it could, could cause kidney problems, and so many far 
many stomach problems and digestion problems. So this is the way. If we don't have healthy teeth in our body and healthy surrounding tissue of teeth in our body, we are losing it. This is uh, the gate of our body health. So they are so important to keep our gum tissue healthy, our all surrounding bone of the jaw healthy, with no any translucencies, as I show you in my x-rays. They need to be treated, otherwise we need to take the tooth out, unfortunately, and being under my, being under, uh, suffer, struggling with the trauma that our body will, will, will really uh, suffer from. But the good news is that this trauma with the laser could be minimized, really, very, very minimized, to the lowest one we can have after the laser application, after the extraction. Yes? Yeah, thank you. Um, titanium and 5G, 6G, 7G, is there, is there anything to comment on that? Like, titanium is a metal, isn't it? So They are, yes. So now we've got 5G, 6G is coming, 7G is coming. Is it not more, is it better to have ceramic? It's better to have ceramic if you think with the way this, this is it. Uh, I have done so many patients, even they are holistic, I have done titanium implants into their mouth. Uh, they are fine. This theory, I don't have... I can't answer you, I can't answer you directly, but I, as I hear, heard from my, my patients again, they said that this could really uh, like making some sort of irradiation. In, I don't know, I, I, I can't answer you directly, but I think so, it's sometimes we don't need to exaggerate with it because we are having some x-rays in my practice and the digital technology, fortunately, it's really a very, very low exposure time. So, if you have an implant, titanium, is this radiation of the X-ray will be spread into the surrounding, surrounding bone of the implant, of the titanium, and will not be uh, surrounded if it was ceramic implant? Uh, I would say I don't know exactly the answer, but I don't think so it is the same way. Because if you will walk underneath the sun, in the sunshine for about five to 10 minutes, that is more than the exposure of the X-ray from the sun, okay, the sun ray, the exposure from the sun ray, it could be 10 times more than the X-ray I have done into your mouth. So yeah. how you will protect yourself from the sun? Walking in the, the road underneath the sunshine or in the summer? No, you can't protect yourself. So. I think, I do feel that there is a bit of exaggeration in the, in, in the way we are presenting it. Uh, but, who knows, maybe we will discover so many things in the near future, soon future or, or later. Yeah. And we'll clarify this radiation, if it is coming from the x-ray, it's coming from the sun, if it's coming, if, if we're talking with our mobile phone, and so far. Yeah, yeah so, um, with all of the pollutions, like the whole the vaccine story and all of this was to put metals into our body as much as possible to make us more susceptible to outside programming. So maybe it's something you could look into further to see if titanium is something that isn't necessarily, like zirc zirc zirconium is often used in, uh, in dentistry and the military use it a lot, so I would be very careful not to put the zirconium into my body. Um, I would like implants, and I'm going to go for the ceramic ones. Yeah. But um, it'd be nice to know a bit deeper, maybe in the future, maybe in six months' time, if you had any further comments on that titanium aspect. And yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, I'll do my research. Um, thank you very yeah. much. You're brilliant. Awesome. And uh, you know. Thank you. Nice thank one. you too. Yeah, great question. Just one over there, John over there. Hi. Just a question regarding um, teeth. When you lose teeth. Um, do teeth grow back? If not, have you tried understanding the frequency of a tooth and then with the laser and putting that frequency onto the gum to regenerate the, groove to uh, the tooth regrowth? One of my cases, I showed the young boy, we have had, and not only this guy, we have had the periodontium, I mean the ligaments around the tooth, came back after the laser uh, application. So. After 
clone the bacteria and simulate the tissue regenerations. So many stem cells turned into like surrounding tissue cells, Correct. healthy cells, with the laser application. That one, as I said in my presentation, you cannot achieve it with other way. Only the laser could really regenerate all types of tissue around the tooth. So then that would be a frequency, isn't it? Then the laser certain frequency. Yes, yes, so, yes. So what I'm saying is maybe look into the fact if you take a frequency of a tooth and then use that frequency of the laser onto the tooth, where the area where the tooth has, has gone or removed, and to ah, see if it will be You mean the crown area, which is no, the tooth in general, because everything is frequency, isn't it, right? Yes, so, correct. So then if the tooth is a frequency and you've removed it, then obviously the body has the ability to regrow teeth again, but is it, will it be not to do with the, the, the frequency you input with the laser on that part? No, 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 it will not. It will not, unfortunately it will not. There is a huge research about regrowing teeth with stem cell uh, 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 biostimulation with laser as well, yeah. with dial laser mainly. And you, uh, you like expose them to laser radiation. There are so many research, they stop them because it's not... Because it works, probably. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but the only thing we couldn't recreate is the enamel of the tooth because it is a cellular. It has no cells inside. I mean the diamond part of the tooth, the strongest part of the tooth, which which is composed of prisms, and this part of the tooth, we couldn't recreate it in the lab. They could recreate pulp, the nerves and blood vessels inside the canals of the tooth. They could recreate in uh, rats, they did it. They could recreate the dentin, but they couldn't recreate the enamel. Yeah, and that, they said that, we okay, we'll recreate the tooth with the dentin and then put a crown of zirconia over it. And that was the idea. But all those research stopped before COVID. <laughs> Fortunately. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for them, not for us, unfortunately. Do you have, do you have time to just briefly say, um, you mentioned that you're going to have a new treatment for removing the mercury fillings. Yes. Can you briefly tell us what that Yes, is? yes. So it's a smart protocol. It is uh, uh, the uh, safe amalgam and mercury removal protocol, okay, treatment. Uh, it needs some like special preparation of the patients and the dentist and special environment, which uh, like isolation of the teeth before removal of the amalgam, uh, have a high volume of special uh, air filters and infiltration and suctions, uh, high ejection suctions. So all of this, it will be implicated in my practice within the next month. And do you use ozone for that or just do lasers? I do lasers because it is much, much, much superior than yeah. ozone results, unfortunately. <laughs> I would okay. not disadvertise the ozone. The ozone is good, but for very, very minimal yeah. uh, in comparison to the laser use. Yeah. Thank you. Not at all. Um, I've said to my dentist, I said, um, I, I had a feeling not too long ago, that's, I don't know, about a year ago, and I said, uh, I don't want them if they've got mercury and she goes oh we stopped using mercury years ago so how do we and find the NHS that? or this is or their private. NHS it's just a standard dentist yeah it said they do NHS stuff as well mm. so I'm guessing they were lying mm. how do we find out if they're lying how do we find out whether we've got mercury in us or not I it's, mean, it's quite not clear just tell you obviously aren't they so. the amalgam filling is the silver filling it's silver it's filling does dark, have yeah. mercury in of it, course yeah? Okay, of course. she said they didn't, so of course. Now, right, okay. <laughs> Maybe do a DSAR on her or something. <laughs> of course, so I think it's uh, composed of mercury and, and silver, okay? And is, some other particles, some other metals. This is a titanium filling, and uh, my tooth keep... I was flossing recently. Titanium implants, you mean? Yeah, but yeah. my tooth fell out, and I pushed it back in. And you cr the crown fell out. Yeah. yeah. Will I go back to the dentist to get you glued in? Can I use super glue, glue tech, Pritzky? <laughs> um, do it myself. You know, I just hammer it. You're back to the <laughs> So I've got to go back to the dentist, haven't I? Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 Lovely. Yeah. Thank you very much for everyone. Thank you. Really appreciate it.